Let's Dana. bring in Senator Tom Cotton. He's a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Uh, the two big stories, we're going to talk about both of them with you. Let's start on the vaccine mandates. You know, when I always think about a presidential address, I think, like, what's the goal? The, and the goal is to get more people who are unvaccinated to hopefully be persuaded to be vaccinated. And I'm not sure if attacking them actually gets you further to that goal, Senator. No, Dana, it doesn't. Uh, and this new federal vaccine mandate is just a political distraction. It's probably unlawful and it's almost certainly counterproductive. Political distraction because Joe Biden campaigned last year preposterously by attacking Donald Trump for this vaccine when it was unleashed in the world by China. But he said that he was going to get it under control. He thought the economy was going to bounce back because of the vaccines that the Trump administration created. Yet here he is after the disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal with his poll numbers plummeting. He's trying to shift the focus away from those other crises back to the pandemic when it's really his fault for having campaigned on this last year and attacked the Biden or the Trump administration and even attacked their vaccines as he and Harris did, that we have surging cases once again. It's probably unlawful. Yeah, Look, Senator OSHA speak. doesn't regulate yeah. public health. So ahead, yeah, Senator. I mean OSHA regulates toxic chemicals and, and like unsafe scaffolding. Right. They don't rec they don't regulate epidemics. And finally, as Dana, as you suggested, it's ineffective. I mean by scolding and, and condescending to Americans, mm. dripping with scorn that somehow this is their fault that they've been infected with a virus, they're not going to persuade people to get more vaccines. Look, the vaccines that the Trump administration created in record time are very safe and effective. I would encourage everyone to talk to their doctor about their own personal health conditions and then consider getting it. But dictating it through unlawful means in the kind mm -hmm. of dripping, scornful way that Joe Biden did yesterday is not going to help. Okay, Senator, I apologize for the interruption here. We're, we're balancing two significant stories, as you can clearly see today. Uh, Ron Klain, the chief of staff, retweeted something from Stephanie Rule from MSNBC, said OSHA doing this vax mandate as an emergency workplace safety rule is the ultimate workaround for the federal government to require vaccination. So, I mean, may, maybe in a sense that's how they see it, mm -hmm. as you referred to OSHA in your answer there. Now I want to go to the Taliban, and I want to take you back in time six, seven years uh, to the release of Bo Bergdahl, knowing who is in charge of the Taliban government today. We got two sound bites. I'll play them separately for you. The first one is from June of 2014. This is Anthony Blinking saying the trade for the five Taliban members for Bo Bergdahl was going to be okay in the end. This is what he said. Any threat they would pose to the United States and to Americans has been sufficiently mitigated. Now I want to play a clip from you from March of 2015, the next year, Jen Psaki on Fox reacting to that similar comment. Was it worth it? Absolutely. We have a commitment to our men and women serving overseas or serving uh, in our military, defending our national security every day, that we're going to do everything to bring them home if we can. And that's what we did in this case. Six years later, Senator, how do those comments play? Uh, well, not very well, Bill. Uh, as I said at the time, those five detainees at Guantanamo were not low-level goat herders. They were high-level commanders, and we see that now because they all hold high-ranking positions in the Taliban government, along with, for instance, the Minister of Interior, who's in charge of security in Afghanistan, was designated as a, as a terrorist by the Obama administration. And the emir of the Islamic, new Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan he encouraged his son to become a suicide bomber a few years ago. So, no, that doesn't seem like a very moderate, business-like Taliban. Yet this administration seems more concerned that the Taliban cabinet is full of men as opposed to being concerned that it's full of terrorists. Senator Cotton, we appreciate your thoughts this morning as we reflect on this day before the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Thank you, Senator. It's just really remarkable that this is where we are. It was not sufficiently mitigated, as promised. Thank you.